In this episode, we're going to do some digital blending to create this amazing sunset. Come and join me. Hello, my name is Sodra Mali and welcome to episode 34 of my Photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. I'm a French photographer and I'm living in Paris and welcome to this podcast. Last week, I showed you how to use a plugin called LR Infuse. It's a Lightroom 4 plugin which gives the possibility of doing basically like HDR, blending different exposures into one photo, but with a very natural result. It's almost a free plugin. It's a donation where you give whatever you want. And that was the end result of last week. Check it out. It's really a great plugin, the LR Infuse for Lightroom. This week, we're gonna do again some digital blending, taking these three exposures, normal, underexposed, overexposed, and we're gonna blend them again with Photoshop to get a natural result. But there's a lot of tricks I didn't show you from two weeks ago's episode that you will find out now. For me, digital blending is the most powerful way I have seen to go over our camera limitations today. Sometimes the cameras don't get enough details in the shadow and the highlights, and these techniques get you the best out of each photos. Let me show you how we do this. Okay, so here we are, uh, ready to do one more digital blending. So as I said in the intro, I think it's important to, um, digital blending is really the most powerful uh, technique that I found today to create great landscape. And, you know, I can spend a few episodes showing you a various example. This is another example of a sunset. I'm a huge fan of sunset because as you know, usually whatever scene you see during the day, it will always be nicer at sunset. It's kind of one of these stupid rules, but believe me, they work almost all the time. So here we have a bracket shot. This is a normal shot. This is the underexposed shot. And this is the um, overexposed shot. This was shot years ago, I think. And I shot this, I think, with a 5D Mark I. So it's, um, it's a 12 million pixel uh, photo. And the funny story about this photo is that I was going to shoot Notre Dame, a very famous monument for those who don't know. And, uh, and I turn around and behind me was this view. And right now you cannot tell because a row file is always without information. It's pretty raw and uh, it's got a lot of hidden stuff and it usually doesn't look good when it comes out. So that's a raw file, but you will see as we process it, there was an amazing sunset. And that sunset only lasted about two minutes. And I just turned around and took the photo. And it happens to me all the, you know, not all the time, but many times that I go in my head to shoot blah, and I end up shooting something else. Why? Because I follow the clouds and I follow the light. More complex is the light, more interesting is the light. Any subject is gonna become interesting. And this was an amazing sunset as I'm about to show you. So we're gonna do some digital blending. DRI, digital range increase, you might say also. Uh, I've already done an episode on that. It's going to be the same technique. I just want to show you a few uh, things which is different because every photo, even though the technique is probably the same, has some, you know, little differences. So as usual, and as I always do, I'm going to open up the shadows big time, and then I'm going to bring down the highlights. Then I'm going to press the Option key and turn on my white point. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my blacks. Okay. So now we've got a much more uh, saturated uh, contrast photo. One thing that's important on this photo is the, the white balance. The white balance uh, is not good. As you know, I have this formula for sunset where I usually go to uh, shade. That's what I usually do. And I just add a bit of red, a bit of magenta. Okay, that's my formula. Uh, the other thing I want to do is uh, there was really some red sun here. I want to increase that. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to make sure I am on um, on tint, okay? So that everything else is at zero except int, and I'm going to brush, make sure auto mask is off, make sure feather is at 100, make sure flow is at 100, make sure density is at 100, okay? And I'm going to brush some red here, uh, just here, okay? Um, doesn't do much of a difference, a little bit, but not that much, so I'm get, maybe going to lower slightly the exposure. Okay, maybe add a bit of yellow. Yeah, I just want to increase uh, the sun. Let's see a before and after. Sometimes you have the feeling that you've done nothing. And then you do before 
and after and you realize you've done something it's crazy it is crazy okay so now uh, that's the basis of that very important for this photo is uh, let's check out the let's check out the the noise here uh, and the funny thing is that this photo I originally retouched on Lightroom 1 or 2, I think, because it was years ago. And I just redid it with Lightroom 4 and it really came out a lot better. We have a lot of chromatic aberration on the trees and a lot on the, on the, on the roof here. I'm not sure we can do much about that, probably here, but not on the trees. Um, but that's what happens. You know, it's, it was an old camera and there's not that much you can do, really. Uh, so what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to go and um, do the noise thing. So to do the noise thing, I go to details and uh, well, there's not much noise on that photo. So when there is not much noise, what I usually do is I still put like 10 noise reduction in case there is some hidden noise that, you know, comes up. Now, the reason why is that because more you tweet the photo, more noise is going to come out. So it's important to reduce noise. Uh, color noise, I see I'm going to reduce it also like around 60. But then the sharpening, I'm going to bring the sharpening like 80 or something. Yeah, make it pretty sharp, like 78 sharp. But then it goes grainy in the sky. So to take that out, I'm going to press the Option key and bring the Max tool. You see, now the sharpening is being applied everywhere because my screen is white. As I go to the right, it's going to create a mask. And anything which is black, sharpening is not going to get applied. And it is not needed to have sharpening on the sky because it just makes a grainier sky. Okay, so that's cool. So now we've got sharpening done. Let's, uh, oh no, let's go straight to chromatic aberration. Now check this out. You see all the reds here around the trees and all this, uh, there's a bit of a red here. Let's click remove chromatic aberration and see what happened. Well, it took care of a bit of the red there and not so much on the trees. Let's see before and after. I'm sure you won't be able to tell the difference. So, um, okay, let's maybe uh, do a bit of the fringe. Uh, I'm going to put the amount uh, there. I'm going to put the purple U really to the right. See what happens. No, it's really awful. It took out some, but look what it did. It's not good at all. So let's get this back a little bit. The U is really on the right. You see, the, the, it's really the red. So yeah, it kind of took out. Let's check it out before and after. Before, uh, wow, there's a bit of red and after. It's really subtle. I don't think you can even tell. You probably won't be able to tell. You probably will not be able to tell, but that's all right. I don't like so much on the trees, but I don't think there's much I can do. I mean, yes, of course there are things you can do, but it's, uh, I don't mind it that much. So, okay, so now, uh, oh yeah, make sure you go on profile and unable lens profile. That's, uh, that's really cool. Uh, let me show you the before and after the unable profile correction. Before, after. Okay, now it's way too bright everywhere. So you know what? I'm not going to do that uh, because I think something's going wrong here. It's got the, yeah, it's, it was a really bad lens that I used. It was a 28 to 135. It was a really bad lens. I'm not going to use a profile correction on this one. You know, it's also an aesthetic decision. If you enable the profile correction and it doesn't look good to you, well, you, you're not bounded. There is no contract that you have to use that, you know. Okay, let's check what um, landscape is going to give, but I think it'll be too reddish. Nah, disgusting. Okay, so let's go back on Adobe Standard. All right, and let's, of course, do some post crop vignetting here. Okay, so we could be finished here. You know, we could be finished here, but you know what? Look at this. This is the underexposed photo. I'm look how red it is here. You know, I like this this reddish here. I want to get that back. And look at this. This is the overexposed photo. Look how silky the water is. Now I want to get the best of the three worlds. So you know what? I'm taking all I've done so far. I'm going to select all three, and I'm going to click on synchronize. Make sure everything is checked. Check all, and I'm going to synchronize. Okay, so it's now synchronizing everything I've done so far. So now I'm going to take the underexposed photo, which is way too dark. So what I'm going to do is go back up and I'm just going to bring back the exposure, bright up the, uh, uh, yeah, something like that, Br uh, the exposure on this one. And um, on the sharpening, I'm going to go back. I'm, I don't care about the sharpening. I'm going to use it more for the sky. And I'm going to get the noise reduction way, 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 way on this one, on, on the underexposed on the photo, because I know it's noisy. 
Okay, I'm not doing the uh, profile correction, but I am doing the uh, chromatic aberration that I am doing. And the reason I had so much chromatic aberration, I just realized, is really because of the lens I've been using. But you see here, on the underexposed photo, there is almost no red. And you know what? I'm going to take that, and this way I'm going to get rid of my red. Who I think that's going to be crazy. Okay, so now uh, I like my underexposed. Let's go to the overexposed photo, which is way too bright. So I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to I'm going to darken this photo until the, until the bottom of the photo fits a bit the first one. So yeah, so it's kind of so it makes sense sort of you know. Okay. I like that. So now I'm going to select all three and I'm going to go into edit, edit, uh, open as layers in Photoshop. So what that's going to do, as you know, it one Photoshop file, three layers, each photo is going to be on one layer. So that's very important. And I mean, what we're going to do is not going to be a major change, but you know what? I really don't like the red, how the red is on the normal exposure. I love how it is on the, on the, on the, um, on the low exposure, on the darker one. So, you know, let's try to see if we can the, get the best out of all the world. So for this one, I'm gonna call, this is what? This is, uh, this is the normal one. So I'm gonna call this normal. Okay, and uh, this one I'm gonna call black. Okay, because it's black, it's dark. And this one I'm gonna call light. So I know what is, I always do this sandwich, you know, Put the underexposed photo on top, put the normal photo in the middle, and put the overexposed, overexposed photo at the bottom. Then I press the Option key and click on the Mask tool to create a mask on Photoshop. And as you know, when you create a mask in Photoshop, what happens? You know, especially when you press the Option key, it creates a black mask, and a black mask is going to make everything disappear except where you're going to brush some white. So let's take the Brush tool which is here, uh, I'm going to put the opacity at not 100, like, yeah, 50%, 40%, press X to, for the white color to be the foreground. Uh, I'm going to press the control and option, key, alt key, sorry, and uh, press the, the mouse to make my brush a bit bigger. And let's zoom in here. I really want to, I want to take out this red here and I want to darken the whole sky. So let's go, let's do it. Let's do it. So here on the, it's important to go at 100% here. Check it out. Look at this, how we get back the sun. I love how we get the sun. I'm going to do it here too. I know it, that it, what's going to do, it's going to, it's going to darken, you know, a bit the top of the trees, but I don't mind. I prefer to darken the top of the trees and having this sort of red, super red uh, chromatic aberration. You know, it's really, it was way too strong, way too strong. Okay, so let's back out. Uh, brush, let's see if I can brush. I just want to get this underexposed guy here to come, you know. It must come. Okay, check it out. Before, after. You know, all we did, but look at this, you know. Look how the trees is nicer. Before, after. See how oh, it's got this whole red stuff, you know, and now it's kind of like darker, but it's gone, you know. So then what you can do is, what I really want is just the red part, you know, the, the sun was really red here. So now I'm going to take my brush back. I'm going to press X so that the black is back on. And I'm just going to take out, I just want the, yeah, make sure that there is not of the, of the dark photo here on the tree so that we get some details, maybe here a little bit, you know, brighten up here. So as I'm painting with black, I'm getting back. I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I am um, stopping the underexposed photo to be present. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but basically white uh, reveals, black stops whatever is on that layer. So now that's a mixture of both. Check it out. Before, after. So we got back the crazy sky. It was really like that. I can tell you it was, it was one of the reddest, uh, reddish sky I had seen in Paris. I've seen maybe four or five times in the last five years. So I really liked it, you know. And So now I'm going on a normal and I'm going to create a mask, this time a white mask. and. On the opposite, what I want really is uh, to get a read. You see how this is like very, uh, a lot of texture in the water. I don't like so much texture. I like the silky look. So I'm gonna go get my brush at 100%, make sure it's black, because as I'm gonna paint black, I'm gonna block whatever is on that layer and, and make whatever is on the layer below appear. So check this out. Look how it becomes silky. Ooh, it's silky, silky, silky. I love it. 
so that's really nice. Silky. It's just a lot more nicer, you know. Uh, I don't like the when there is too much texture in the water. It doesn't look right to me. Look, right, if I disable the layer mask before, wow, look at the difference. And if I unable it, see the difference? It's it's crazy. It is crazy. Okay, so that's it. We got both we got the sky I wanted, I got the river that I wanted. So now let's do some final touches. Um, for example, here, uh, it's way too dark. So you know what? Let's do the same thing. Let's take the brush and let's get this overexposed photo to appear uh, here a little bit. What's going on? Why is it not working? Okay. Ah, because it's dark on old photos. Okay, it's dark on old photos. So you know what, when it's dark on old photos, whatever is left is we just create a layer mask and you go overlay mode, okay? Take a white brush, a nut, and let's make it around like 20. And let's just see if we can brush with some white here to, uh, you know, get some more details here. Now, one thing you can do, I, I show you a little trick. If that doesn't work, you know, okay, yeah, it did make it a bit brighter, but if you want to make it even brighter, you can just go back to Lightroom uh, because check it out. You see, on, on a normal photo here, it's very dark. Okay, on the underexposed photo, it's super dark. And on the overexposed photo, it's, you know, it's very dark too. But if I take, for example, the normal photo, I prefer the normal photo. Why? Because it's leaf and leaf when there is wind blowing, you know, uh, uh, is getting very, um, how, how can I say? It's getting very um, fuzzy, very blur. So I'm going to bright this up very much, something like that, just to get details here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into edit, edit in Photoshop. It's just a little trick. And um, okay, and then I'm going to take the move tool and I'm going to take the super overexposed photo and uh, bring it over to that tab. Make sure the shift key is on so that it goes on the top. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'm going to take out that layer and I'm just going to press the option key and click the mask tool so it goes away. And then I'm going to take a white brush because now it's all black. So I'm going to take a white brush and um, what 20% and it's not enough. Let's go for 77%. And I'm just going to bring back some details. You see, it's, check this out. Check this out. I don't like how it was like too, let's do it here. Oh, okay, here it's too strong. So you know what? Uh, no problem. Uh, let's undo that. Take that brush, uh, make the opacity of the brush like 30. And let's just bring back a bit of details. Nah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not nice. It's too strong. Uh, to undo several times, you just press Command Alt Z and you can do several times. Now I'm going to go like really low. Like I'm going to go like 12%. Just want to bring back a bit of detail. It's a bit noisy. It's a bit. No, this is not good. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. So now I've got the best of the four worlds, you know. I don't like what I did there, but it's okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to bring that layer on. Okay, so you see now that layer is way too bright there. So I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to make a new layer, overlay, and I'm going to do some dodge and burning. So uh, dodge and burning, you've got an empty layer in overlay. You take, you've got a brush around 20%. I'm just going to brighten up here a little bit just to make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to brighten up here, here, uh, maybe this tree just a little bit. Okay, make this a bit bigger. Let's make this around 10% now. And there's just some lines here just to, you know, to make it, to make the water a bit more interesting. You know the rule. The rule is more complex your lightning is going to be, more crazy your photo is going to be. Because, you know, uh, uh, that's why, you know, this sort of like, you know, coming out of the dark type of photo is always beautiful on portraits. It's just because it's complex lightning. You know, it's a nice lighting and photography is writing with the light. Okay, that's before, that's after. It's a, If you think it's too strong, you just can lower the opacity. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing I'm going to do, you know what? I don't like what I did here, but that's fine. That's the whole thing about mask. I can just go back here and take, uh, you see, there's a little, uh, I painted here with white, so I can just go with black 100 percent 
and just erase what I did, you know, okay, and that's it. Okay, now I like it better. That's just my taste. So now I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna get it back into Lightroom. So I'm gonna press Command W and say, yes, save it. Please do save it. And it's gonna fall back into Lightroom. That's the overexposed photo. Ooh, it's not nice at all. Okay, but now we've got the Photoshop version of it and you've got, uh, we've got something nice. We, we handle all the chromatic aberration. We've got the fuzzy water. You know, and so you can do as much as you want. You can, you see, the whole idea is that you can develop for each part of the photo a different version of your file and you stack them up in Photoshop. You know, I did that with four layers just to get a, the best out of each part of the photo until it's perfect and you, it's like, you know, how you like it. Okay, so now to finish it off, maybe I'm just going to brighten up a bit the photo and I'm going to go down to post crop vignetting and post crop it a little bit to add more contrast. Maybe add a little bit of clarity oh, yeah just a little bit and a bit of vibrance maybe um i think i did too much vignetting so i'm gonna back that down a little bit now vignetting is not so much in on this one okay no yeah i never stop with that okay let's let's go back on exposure okay okay i love it this way now if i compare it to the first one so this one now is way overexposed because we did this sort of special development just for this part of the photo, but I can just go in the history and, uh, sorry, in develop module, history, 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 history. Last move was um, exposure. I overexposed the photo. Okay, so now I get it back. And let me show you, this is the, the normal raw file. That's, it's already pretty nice. We could have stopped there. Let me, so I selected, that's the final Photoshop version. So I'm going to press the C key to compare both. Okay, at first they kind of look the same. Now, look at this. The only difference you can really tell is on the right, that's the Photoshop version. The water is more fuzzy because I took the water from the uh, overexposed photo. Okay, now it looks also more punchy. So of course I like the one better on the right, but look at this. If I zoom at 100% and for example, here on the trees, uh, you know, look at the sky here. It's beautiful. It's red. There is not so much red around the, the trees. You know, it's uh, here. It's like really a, a chromatic aberration big time. You know, that's very important. So we've got a, a nicer sky here, you know. So, yeah, that's that's what I like. I like the most. Uh, sorry. I like the most this one. And uh, so, yeah, basically, that's it before I leave you guys I just want to talk to you and answer a question that I get a lot what's the difference between the free videos you make on YouTube and the training that you sell on your website well there is two major three major difference one is that it's a lot more in depth I usually go a lot more step by step on this training for example this is my last training Photoshop 6 CS6 retouching which is like six different projects I take a bit more time you know I go a bit more slowly and you have a lot more projects you know this is like the equivalent of six episodes and you get all the raw files and all that just for ten dollars so it's not very expensive um, so raw files you get for free if you pay the ten dollars you get all the raw files and you also have all the quick start course for example Photoshop CS6 quick starts is a two and a half course with maybe 20 raw files well, you, I will try to give you the basics of, uh, of Photoshop in a couple of hours and uh, with lots, lots of examples. So it's a lot more in-depth, a lot more raw file and all this for just $10. And if you want to support this podcast, you can buy one of these free training and you get a very good price. You get, uh, I made a new package, which is $63 instead of 90 with nine of my training. That is like 18 hours of training and about 100 raw files for $63. It's a steel it's probably the cheapest training you can find on the internet. So uh, I try to make it as low as I can. I try to make things as free as I can uh, so that everybody can learn something. So that's basically it. And also, if you are Francais and you speak French and you're following my tutorials, I made a new page on my website. It's called Tutoriel, which is a French name. And you have a selection of French tutorials, only French, uh, en Francais, that you can find on my partner, tuto.com. So that's a totally something new. And last but not least, if you go on podcast, which is the the third, uh, the last point uh, page, sorry, on my website, you get all the past episodes. So you can, you know, where they are. You know, if you want to watch back some episodes, you've got now, I've got now 33 episodes up and you can also purchase for $3 the raw files being used for each show. Voila, thank you very much. And let's get back to the studio.
Okay, so I hope you liked that episode and uh, that it will encourage you to do some digital blending. As usual, if you like this show, please share it on your social network. It helps me to grow and get it known. I have soon 17,000 followers on it, which I'm really happy and I would like to get a lot more. And if you can help me, that is really helping me making this free weekly podcast for you guys. See you next week and have some great photos.